I, I, just with the access thing, I, you, you know, the first film, the first film I ever did was uh, uh, World Trade Center, right? Oliver Stone, and you know, man, I, I, had, I had no idea. I didn't grow I grew up around any actors. I had no idea about like research and that. You know, it, research to me was books, man. It, I, I had no idea that Oliver was going to take us down to the bus terminal and that we were going to meet these Port Authority cops and that we could go out with them every day for a month, that he was going to facilitate that. I had no idea that that was even a thing. And I got to know these guys. I played this guy named Chris Amoroso who died in the, when, when the towers went down, he left the youngest widow and, 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 and his daughter, uh, his, his wife, Sophia, and, and, and his daughter, Jamie. And uh, I met these two guys, uh, Sergeant Finney and, and Officer Fairbanks, who were his two best friends, right? And I couldn't believe the level of trust that these guys put, put in me. And, and when we were doing that film, I had written a letter. I had written a letter to Chris's widow, just asking for her blessing that I was going to be doing this. And, 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 and just to say, look, his memory is, belongs to you. But if you want to be a part of memorializing this, you want to talk to me about Chris, I would love that. And I'm just some shitbag actor from, from, from Hollywood. And, and, and this, you, you, you know, uh, this is sacred to you. And, you know, the studio, I was just, you know, the studio shut it down. The producer said, you can't reach out. And in the film, they had ended up taking all of the wives and the and and uh, the the children's names out of the movie, and and they had completely taken that part out because the wives had gotten together and said they didn't want to be a part of it, and that had uh, it had bothered me so much that I couldn't reach out to her. Mm. And then on my last day uh, of that month of going around with Finney and Fairbanks, uh, they say, "Hey, we got a surprise for you, kid," and they 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 put me in a car and they took me out to to her house. And I got to meet her and, and, and now we've kept in touch and we've become, and uh, you, you use the word access. Uh, I, I, I couldn't fucking, I mean, to me at that point, cops were guys that beat me up. Cops were guys, like I, I didn't, you know, but, but I, I had uh, my, the power to, 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 to change your entire fucking idea of, of, of people and, and the power of get, going into their lives and being able to walk among them and walk with them. And, and for me, that's always been my, uh, armor that's mm -hmm. always been if, if I can do that then I can walk in there and I can do anything if I can walk among them if I can call them friends and share space with them yeah and I'm just wondering I guess that the I felt that now and 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 I see it now that you, you know on a small scale people know who the fuck I am and what that does and what that that allows me to have the kind of conversations I have and how much richer my life has gotten how much better of a dad I've become better friend better husband better I'm I'm so unbelievable more more so than 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 you know, my dream of being able to, you know, raise my kids because I get to do the thing I love more than anything else in the yeah. world. This access is in is incredible. And I guess there's a there's a commitment to to to, to researching these roles and to, to for a means for the end. And I'm just wondering at a certain point, did this lead to what you're doing now? Was it or are they are they, they the same Probably the same hunger and probably the same satisfaction and curiosity, but also I think because look, you and I have probably benefited a great deal from caring about what we do and therefore including whatever I can eat to do it well, right? And we also know that in the mechanics of filmmaking, so for example, um, uh, Bradley Cooper has a, a, a moment in American Sniper where he's taking his uh, sniper rifle uh, uh, down or packing it away and in, in just that moment, he's handling that weapon in a way that licenses everything else. That sell just that moment, right? We know a lot of times we'll go out and do the the research on everything, and sometimes it gets in our way on the movie. And you're sitting there and you're telling the director, "That's not how they do it," and yet this little poetic license is going to make the scene that works work or not and you got to tell a whole lifetime in two hours and there's going to be shorthands and so sometimes the, the the you know that hunger for the reality and to represent it to honor it you know can we can lose track and sometimes it's about and this is just a learning curve for me where you try to get selective about the things at the same time the thing that's most important more than everything's got to be just like the real thing which generally speaking, does get in the way. There's the confidence that comes with having put in the time and to be able to offer options based on observations that you just had by 
being so focused on it. And I saw this, um, what had to be extemporaneous, um, um, closing argument of a debate. And it had to be extemporaneous because there was no way that this person could have known where the debate was going to go. And it was a debate on political correctness with sort of um, odd um, bedfellows, as it were, uh, partnering on one side of the debate about political correctness. And that was the partnering of uh, Stephen Fry with Jordan Peterson. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, it was Michael Eric Dyson and Michelle Goldberg of the New York Times. And at the end of it, Stephen Fry, and God, I recommend this to everybody to see, just look up Stephen Fry, closing argument. He summarizes, and I, it, it's an indirect way of addressing what we're talking about, but I don't want to give away too much, but I, he, he talks about that there's a kind of obligation to a certain People will find it ironic that I'm saying this. Um, lightness. And he's celebrating uncertainty, admitting that he, he, he's opposed to anything, any orthodoxy. And, and as it relates to acting, um, the orthodoxies, especially as young actors, can get us into trouble. And, and I think I recognized that pretty early on. So that, for example, I'll tell you two quick funny stories. Well, th three chapters. One was the first movie I did is Taps at a military academy. I'm going to tell you, we didn't, we, they, they sent us through that training and we were taking it so seriously. I must have been 21 years old, 22, whatever I was. My last scene in that movie, I play the, the best friend of the leading actor, Tim Hutton. And then we've got this one crazy guy who Tom Cruise played who's starting a riotness, a war with the National Guard. And I'm trying to, I'm kind of the conscience for Tim to try to tell him not to get into trouble with this thing. And uh, so all these cadets have taken over the military school. They've gotten into the armory and they got, he's got like an M60 and Tom Cruise does in the window. Looking down at the National Guard, he just wants a war. And Tim Hutton in that dramatic last scene sees him as Tom Cruise looks up at us and says, it's beautiful, man, beautiful. And he starts the, the, the gun. Tim does the kind of classic no moment, you know, and runs and jump. And I see my best friend, Tim, going for for the, the Tom Cruise character. And I, would, I just want to get him. And, I, and so, so here's what happens. I get to set. Now the wall is all squibbed. It's all, you know, they took five hours of the previous day to pre-rig it with all these automatic weapon fire. And uh, and so we're, uh, we're going to walk it through once before. Let's get make sure the Go guys. Are, and Tim goes racing in and they say, bap, 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 bap. You know, they're not setting them off yet. Right. And I hit the deck and I start scrambling to, to get to Tim and grab his body, pull it, because he's been shot. I'm supposed to grab him, pull him out, and I'm dragging. And, and, and it's, Sean, Sean, uh, it, you, you just went right out of the shot. Har Harold Becker, who, who's, I, is still a great friend today. And, I, and he, he said, just, you know, they basically wanted me to run through the hail of gunfire. And I argued like I had been in the business my whole life. <laughs> and... It was a, the producers were brought down. They did like, like this was not going to happen. I, I'm not going to do this. And I had never heard this thing before, which is look, do one this way. And then we will re-rig <laughs> the wall, you know, and we'll do, you know, and, and we did. Well, I go to the Avco cinema and when the movie comes out and I'm sitting in the back row and I'm watching the movie and I've never seen a movie I was in before. And just at the moment that I am going to Tim, the guy having no idea that the actor playing this role in front of him was sitting behind him. This guy says, hit the deck asshole. <laughs> 
<laughs> and and that set me up for not listening to directors for a long time. Um, and then, and sometimes still, uh, but, <laughs> but on this kind of, you know, this devotion to the craft, if, if there were a movie about actors researching, yeah. there's, been, there's been a comedy about it. Yeah, yeah. It's not as funny as mine. Yeah.